Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Andy, a.k.a. Montolio, and I'm joined here by my buddy, Josh, a.k.a. Cronin, and we are here for the CQ number three qualifier, and we are in round two, and we have back guns on his espresso stacks build against Gallant with his custom sliver build. And, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I was a little bit late getting to the match, so back guns had already played his first turn, and... We're rolling into our second here where he drops a lodestone. How are you, Josh? I'm good. How are you, man? Doing great. I would uh, guess this game's over already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not looking too good. Uh, Backguts actually got down the turn one sphere and followed that up with a lodestone golem, um, which is definitely problematic for any deck, let alone a slower sliver build. Yeah, he's got a lot of high okay. casting costs, so he's going to be in trouble against two spheres. Oh, definitely. Kind of cool to see Galleon's deck in action, though. This is something that we talked about on a couple podcasts ago. Uh, that was a little bit of an interesting build, and cool to see Slivers back in Classic. Looks like he won't cast been many, a spell in this, in this event, or in this match, though, or this game. Yeah, no, this is definitely looking... Uh, about as ominous as as things could possibly look here for for anybody facing down three spheres who only has three lands in play and a factory for that matter. Very few decks so, could beat this board state right now. I don't know that any deck could beat this board state right now. <laughs> the way things are sitting, so yeah. Uh, um, yeah, if I was a betting man, Josh, which I am, I would say that this was over two turns ago, and that is definitely the nail on the coffin with a chalice at two. I should have just played that at one. Can't even cast a two casting cost spell. That's a very good point, but I'm sure the majority of the slivers are two and three casting costs, so. There you have it, folks. Game one done, and right into game two. And that puts Galliant on the play. We you know, see. I would think that... Yeah, yeah, I would think the Sliver deck would have a little bit better of a chance playing on the play against Stocks, as pretty much anything does. And, and oh, more back... Slivers than I do. Is there a Sliver... There's a Sliver that kills artifacts, isn't there? A Harmonic Sliver will kill either artifacts... Or enchantments. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful sliver, but uh, it's not one that I. I think I played it as a one off in my sliver decks. Kind of as a silver bullet. Because I, I believe it was just a 1 1. But. So, Galleon had a pretty underwhelming first turn, just played a island, and Backguts was equally as unimpressive, just playing a Sol Ring and an Ancient Tomb. And is that a quick sliver I'm seeing, Josh? Looks like a quick sliver. On one flashing sliver that gives your slivers flash. That seems problematic to me for him. Probably not. As in for Galleon. No. No. Uh, no turn three play for Galleon. My goodness gracious, Lord Almighty. Well, he can flash him in, though. Well, that's true. Maybe he's that got is a, a very good point. STP or something? No. Yeah, I actually stop in front of me, but uh, I um, well, he's not flashing anything in now. No. Because he just well, which seems um, oh dear. Back that's bold to five and seems to have this game well under control. I'm and oh dear. I mean, he didn't play Tangle anything wire. until he played a Worm Coil, so <laughs> normally I'd be happy to play against a shop deck like that, but it's going to be good enough here, I think. Yeah, well, Backguts realizes that he's going to have difficulty dealing with a Worm Coil, period. But this is, uh, yeah, uh, there you have it, folks. That is probably one of the fastest games in history, and yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. See you later.